So in today's video, we are going to be discussing the six power tools that I think if you own, you can renovate just about anything in your house. And here's why. Let's just face it, there's a tool for everything out there. No matter what project you're looking at, someone's designed a power tool to solve that problem, to make you faster, make it safer, make it better, whatever it is. But as a home renovator, you can eliminate the need for a lot of those tools if you know how to use these six basic tools. So I'm gonna show you how to save a ton of money. Let's get right into it. One of the tools I think everybody needs to own no matter what is a grinder. Now, I don't think traditionally the grinder is something a lot of people think about as a power tool that I've gotta have. But think of the versatility. And I know before you get into it, I've taken the, the well, I didn't take the protector off. I never installed it in the first place. I've been using this one for about nine years now. Uh, it only cost me a hundred bucks nine years ago. Still a great tool. I love the way it, you hold it. You can have your thumb on the handle the whole time. So at any time you can turn it off if you want to. The wheel itself has a quick ch change lock on it. Okay, so that depresses and then you just put your wrench on there and you can change out your, <laughs> there we go. You can change out your wheel, right? And the wheels are different. That's a disc flap. It's more of a carpentry tool. You can use it to grind down the edges of your baseboards or your crown molding so you can get a perfect contour fit. Uh, this is a cutoff wheel. What do we got here? Masonry, all right? You can cut stone. You can get them for metal grinder cutting wheels. This one's for glass. Of course, you can buy them for ceramic or porcelain, different blades, a lot of different options. So no matter what you're dealing with, a grinder gives you the ability to do custom cutting in all kinds of scenarios. Remember, if you're stuck somewhere and you got a piece of rebar sticking out of concrete, you can cut it off. If you're doing tile work and you got to cut around your electrical receptacle, you can cut it off. If you're dealing with anything in the house that needs a precision cutting tool, this is the tool that'll work for you. It's a hundred bucks, blades range from five to 50, depending on what kind of material you're cutting. Because sometimes you're getting into blades that have little diamonds in them as the abrasive to do the cutting with. Other than that, it's really basic. Now, most people I would suggest, you wear your safety glasses when using this and don't follow my example. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a little reckless. I get it. I'm a safety second, production first kind of guy. That's just how it works. But moving on, once you've got a cutting tool, of course, you gotta have a drill driver. Now you can buy these, you can get the, the regular type of drill as, as, as well as the impact. I love the impact driver and I abuse it. I've had my impact driver now. This one is only three years old, but I use it every day, all day long. It's quick release, change your bits. It's got a magnetic tip on this one. You can put in, make it a socket wrench. Right? Change your tires, do automotive work. Quick release, you can drill holes because nowadays all of the bits come with this little dimple in this here and it makes it fit into these quick releases. Of course, you can get an auger bit and you can drill deep and fast, right? Or you can just put in any kind of drill driver and now you can screw anything in the world to the wall. I'm telling you right now, it's incredibly versatile. I get the 20 volt brushless so it never overheats and melts, it lasts forever. Batteries are quick release. They come with a little reader on it so you know how much battery charge is left. They slap together quick, has a little loop there to stick it on my tool belt, and it's just with me everywhere I go. For a couple hundred bucks, you can have a drill that can do anything except mix concrete. But you know, that's another story. How often do you mix concrete? Next tool you gotta have. Got to be able to do demolition. Now, I've been a long time been a proponent of using a corded sawzall tool. I understand the cordless tools have come a long way recently, and so I'm gonna end up buying more and more of them and using them in the show, and that's fine. But until this thing dies, there's no need for me to replace it. The way this operates is simple enough. It has a quick release lever on the side. You lift, lift this open, and you can pull the blade out. Now inside, you got the option for going vertical or horizontal or upside down. Okay, you let go and it's locked in. That's simple. If it ever gives you trouble or gets jammed because of dirt or rust, bum, ba, ba, bum, grab your WD-40 and just spray the gears and you're good to go for another couple months. All right, that is a tool that if you have, you can get blades 
everything dealing from cutting cast iron pipe to cutting metal to cutting wood or wood with nails, even doing precision trimming on flooring if necessary. It's a real valuable tool. <sighs> Everybody saw me do the shed video. I built the whole shed with a skill saw. Now this is the new one that I got, all right? This is awesome. This is the one we got from International Tool. It's a seven and a quarter inch blade, which is standard for most of these circular saws. Again, it's working on the same 20 volt batteries that I've already got in my inventory. It also has an attachment here so I can put a guide on here. So I can use it like a portable table saw. I can't wait to get the guide and try that out. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, quick adjustments. You can change and cut on 45 degree angles. Boom, and back here. Quick adjustment, set the depth of the, of the, of the blade so that you can cut from almost zero, okay, to the depth. Now, if you're cutting thin material, you drop the lever down. So you're only cutting the material plus a little bit. The idea here, the less friction you cause to your blade, the better. If you're cutting a thin material and you have your whole blade exposed, that's a lot more blade that's heating up than necessary. It's going to shorten the life of your blade. So make adjustments as you go. Extend the life of your blade. Save yourself some money. Here we go. Oh, and if you want to, in the back end here, the wrench to change the blades comes in the tool. It has its own little place here. You'll never get stuck looking all over the place. Where'd my wrench go? That's an awesome feature. Of course, every homeowner has got to have a chop saw. Now this is a pretty basic model. It's a 12 inch, which is nice because it cuts really thick material. And it does compound miters, okay? So it'll swivel both sides and a layover, but it's not a sliding saw. And the reason I'm showing you this one is because I think for homeowners, most of the time, 99% of the time, you don't need a sliding saw. And the odd time you do, it's gonna be for doing rough carpentry. Things like deck framing and that sort of thing. And it doesn't really matter if you have to cut from both sides to finish the cut, because no one's gonna see the finished look. Now, professional carpenters are probably gonna get a 12 inch compound sliding miter saw. It's an extra three to $500 for that tool. And it's not necessary to invest that kind of cash if you're an average homeowner doing DIY projects around the house. Stick with the basics. Probably get this for about two to 250 on sale, about two or three times a year. They always have a Christmas and then a Father's Day sale and then some other tool event. So if you're looking for buying an expensive tool, buy smart, buy at the right time of year. It's a great investment. This one I've had for at least seven years. It's a great model and it never ever disappoints and it has incredible power. My goodness. The last tool you gotta have. And I don't care what kind of projects you're doing, you've got to have a compressor, okay? This is a cute little model from Husky. Uh, I got this at Home Depot. Man, I must have been using this the last six or seven years as well. Uh, it doesn't have an, a major amount of power. It only has one port. But if you're a homeowner, that's all you need, right? And you can adjust the amount of pressure that you put on there. And it has a muffler. Mine doesn't have my muffler anymore, so it's getting a little loud because I'm abusive to my tools. <laughs> but the idea here is I can run a hardwood nailer. I can run my trim nailer. I can run anything on this tool. I've even used this to do spray texture. And I, you know what? As a side note, the tool's only a hundred bucks. If you buy this for a hundred dollars, Buy yourself a really good hose. Now this isn't no kink, $50 hose, worth the investment. You're never gonna have an issue. A lot of these cheap compressors, they've got a little thin coiled up hose. It'll drive you nuts trying to work with it. Throw that thing in the garbage as soon as you buy your compressor. Get a real hose to go with it, okay? Once you've got a compressor, the amount of attachments that you can put on that are endless, right? Ladies, I've had a lot of people ask me, how, what kind of tool do I use, you know, so that I can hammer things? This palm nailer is amazing. You just put that against, put a nail in there and put it into anything. If you can hold it up, which is only about two pounds, you can nail the biggest nail in the world with ease. All you gotta do is put gentle pressure against the wall. This, this does all the work for you. This will turn any woman into a beast on a job site. I'm telling you right now. Aside from that, you got your trim nailer. You can get air tools for paint spraying. Attaching to this, you can get uh, the big blue hoppers so you can put on texture spray or uh, stucco ceiling. You can get crown staplers, you can get floor staplers, you can get just about anything that can be done with a pneumatic nailer. 
$100. That's the base price. Now a lot of the specialty tools that you can get to use with this, you can rent. So you don't have to invest in that. So if you're doing a hardwood project, you can rent the tool for the day because you've already got this thing right at home. It's only 35 bucks and you can install your own hardwood floors. So all of that said, if you want tools, you can help support our channel by going to our link on our homepage, International Tool. Hundreds of vendors on there. Just search, have a little fun shopping. Okay, now here's the other thing. All of this together is less than a thousand bucks. And that might seem like a big investment because I've had people comment on the channel before. Well, that's a nice project. Yeah, I made you a lot of money, but the amount of money you gotta spend on tools is astronomical. I'm like, no. I try to do almost all of my projects with this basic tool set right here. Now, I might use a corded skill saw them sometimes, but the reality is basic tools. You can get a lot of projects done with it. You can renovate your whole bathroom, a whole kitchen, build a whole deck, just with what you see right here. No need to go and fill an entire workshop full of tools. If you learn how to use these properly, you can build anything and you can do it yourself. And if you wanna see us build that shed, then just watch the link right here and you'll see how simple it is to build a 10 by eight foot shed with just a few hand tools and a skill saw. Have a great day, we'll see you soon.